Hello, beloveds. Welcome to the Amanda Collins podcast. It's my honor to help you awaken to joy, be your greatest self, and live a life you love. I'm Amanda Collins. Each week, I'll share tips, practices, and rituals to help you feel the storehouse of joy inside. I'll answer your questions and talk with thought leaders from around the world about health, wealth, love, conscious living, and parenting. Are you ready to live your most fulfilled life? During this interview, we'll talk about lies that we tell ourselves to stay in overwhelm, guilt, and not feeling like we're enough. Exploring ways to connect with who am I? Why am I here? We'll talk about ways to overcome emotional eating, how to keep our lives in balance, and learn how to live with the seasons of the earth and the phases of the moon. Sarah Jenks is the founder of Whole Woman, a monthly online membership for women seeking the answers to who am I and why am I here and live more and weigh less the most popular online emotional eating program. Between her online programs and as proprietoress of the Hawthorne Farm, her 23-acre retreat in Medfield, Massachusetts, Sarah holds sacred space to empower women and support them in finding their magic and rediscovering their most authentic selves. Since 2009, Sarah's community of women seeking a fuller, more meaningful life has grown to almost a hundred thousand members. I am so delighted and honored to have Sarah here with us today. Sarah, thank you so much for joining us. Amanda, thank you so much for having me. I'm so, I'm so thrilled to talk to your community. It's going to be so fun. Oh, well, thank you. And I am so excited to, to dive into this amazing wisdom that you have to share. Uh, but first of all, I'd love, can you just give us a little bit of a, a backstory on why this work and what has brought this about? What ignited this in you? Mm. So I, I started really struggling with my body when I was very little, 10 years old. I went to my first Weight Watchers meeting and I had this belief that if I could just lose 20 pounds, then I would have the perfect life. And this, I feel like is a big lie that women have been told, you know, since we were born. And it was, it kept me in the place of thinking that, oh, my life is just 20 pounds away. My perfect life is just 20 pounds away, but I could never lose the weight. I was a really bad dieter. And, um, this went on for, you know, until I was in my mid twenties and I just, I had this one really epic, terrible binge while I was on a juice cleanse and I felt so broken and I felt so down and I honestly gave up on dieting and I just resolved to being chubby forever. And all of a sudden when I gave up dieting, I realized, oh, my life is so boring. And I am not who I want to be. This is not the life that I thought I would have. And so I decided to join a meditation group. I really worked on my relationship with my boyfriend at the time, who I'm now married to. I really worked on having more depth in my friendships. And I did more things for fun. I brought more joy into my life. So of course, lo and behold, once I started having fun and not being so stressed out, I wasn't binging every night Mm -hmm. and I naturally moved to a place in my body that was right for me and which at the time was losing 30 pounds. So it was pretty dramatic. Um, I'd never lost more than five pounds in my entire life. So, and of course, but my life changed because I changed my life. My life didn't change because I changed my body. Mm -hmm. And so from there, I, I quit my job in advertising And I went to nutrition school and studied a lot about emotional eating. And I came out with this program called Live More, Way Less um, in 2011. And it's been a huge success. 
And as part of my own healing journey with emotional eating and what I found just really helpful for the women was that um, there was really two main, like the main cause I found of emotional eating was we were so exhausted trying to be someone that we weren't. Um, so mm-hmm. exhausted performing, so exhausted pre- pretending, so exhausted people pleasing and being who our parents want us to be and being who, our, who we think our partners want us to be. And, um, and then I really found that the antidote to that was a spiritual practice. And when we have a spiritual practice, it's when we finally have the space to uncover who we are and it gives us the courage to be that person in our daily life. Because I actually find that, um, understanding who we are is pretty, can be actually pretty easy if we just take the space. But being that person in the grocery store, at a cocktail party, at around the Thanksgiving table is really hard. And so that is why I have created this whole body of work that I call Whole Woman around helping women understand who they are and then be that person in their daily life through using earth-based spiritual practices to give us, to like help us understand really who we are as women because we're just a reflection of this planet that we live on, but we've been taught otherwise. Hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. And I have so much, so much to kind of ask about so many incredible different points that you made from, um, you know, how did you heal from emotional eating as well as just kind of stepping into your joy and, and then through your spiritual practice and what were your spiritual practices of who am I? But before we get into all of that, I, I really, um, one thing that I, I loved as I was reading all about all that you offer, but is what are the main lies that mm. we tell ourselves that bring us into overwhelm, into guilt, into just never thinking that we're enough? What, what are those lies? And um, tell us all about that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'd love to share, I'd love to share two, the, the two that I think are most important. And then I would think it would be great for everyone. If you guys want the other two, you can go to sarahjenks.com. I have this really great workshop called The Four Lies um, That Keep Women overwhelm and stuck and in this cycle of guilt and resentment that I can totally relate to. Um, I think the number one that I've, that I've already touched on is that women have to look a certain way in order to have a certain life or in order to have permission to be who we are. And I think this, it's so important for us to understand that this is, this is patriarchal brainwashing at play. This is not the truth. This is not about health. This is um, a tool to keep women from rising up into power because if we are constantly working on our bodies, then we're never working on our work in the world and what we're here to do and how we're meant to change um, humanity and the planet with our time here. And it's a distraction. And this lie that we need to lose weight before we can do something like that is just not true and deliberately keeps us in a cycle of of binging and dieting and binging and dieting, and then we just never get on with the real work. So I think that this is a really super important thing to understand and to realize that the truth is that you know, being thin doesn't change your life. Changing your life changes your life. And it's really revolutionary for us to say, I'm going to be who I am, even though I don't look like someone who is maybe more accepted in our society. Now, this is the next piece of this that I always get from people. But Sarah, if I stop trying to lose weight, then I will eat whatever I want. Um, And This is part of the lie that the only reason to take care of our bodies is to look a certain way. Like how messed up is that? Mm -hmm. It's so messed up. And so, because there are a million reasons to take care of our body, the main one being we live in it. So don't we want to feel good on a daily basis? in our bodies? You know, don't we want to have energy? Don't we want to not have a stomach ache? Don't we want to not have constant headaches or be blowing our nose all the time or, um, 
are feeling sluggish or, you know, don't we want to be able to, you know, run through the forest or roll on the ground with our children? You know, don't we want to be able to, you know, stand up there at the mic and just kill it on stage? That takes taking care of this home, our body homes that we live in. And this lie that the only reason to take care of ourselves is to look a certain way keeps us in this place of being the rebel, you know, of being the teenager. It's like, well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to eat whatever I want. And then we have all these people eating whatever they want, feeling really empowered, but actually not feeling very good. So I just think it's so, um, it's such a detrimental lie. Is this all making mm -hmm. sense, Amanda? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And um, thank you. I, I 100% agree. It's like, eating i mean it all comes back to loving yourself knowing your self worth and actually just wanting to look after your beautiful temple and, and exactly. eat the foods that nourish us and get to bed on time and and not because it's like oh you know how will i look it's just how do i feel and then when yeah. we feel a certain way we're empowered to want to carry on on that path and and that's when we start to feel really good it's just the feeling versus the the external looks you know which is which is nice we all enjoy um you know looking good as well of course there's nothing wrong with that but if that's what the core intention is that's not ideal right right and especially looking good to be accepted like that's the part that is so hurtful to us that we feel like in order to get love, we have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that just keeps us in a terrible cycle. So um, now the next thing is that, uh, the next thing is that we have to, the lie is that we have to operate like a man in order to be a functioning person in society. So what I mean about that is, a, a man has a 24 hour hormonal cycle. So a man's hormonal cycle resets every 24 hours. Um, I learned this from Elisa VT, by the way, whose website is Flow Living. She's um, a genius, a prolific genius on hormone work. Wonderful, thank you and, for sharing. Yeah, and, um, and a woman's hormonal cycle is 28 days. This is very different than 24 hours, right? But our whole society is built around a 24-hour cycle where we're supposed to be the same every day, we're supposed to get the same amount of work done every day. We show up at work at the same, same time and leave, clock out at the same time. Um, and we are meant to work at the same speed all four seasons. Like maybe there's a little bit of a dip during summer, but not much. And... This is really, so what happens is that women will feel like, oh, I don't have any energy today. What's wrong with me? And we judge ourselves mm -hmm. when actually they're probably just a few days before they're about to bleed where yeah. we normally have lower energy. Um, or people will say, oh my gosh, you're, you're so, women are so unpredictable. We are not unpredictable. We are just not the same every day <laughs> because we have a diff, we have a 28 day hormonal cycle. Um, or we'll do things like when we're in our, in our follicular phase at the beginning of our cycle, which feels like spring, lots of energy. It's like the, the waxing moon. We sign up for a marathon because we're so excited to go for a run, run every day. Fast forward three weeks and running is the last thing we want to do. And instead of knowing and understanding, oh, I'm in a different part of my cycle, I need to wait till I have the energy again. Since we haven't been educated on this, we, we judge ourselves. Oh, I, I have no follow through. I'm like really bad at sticking to what I promise myself I'm going to do. When that's mm. not the case, mm. we just need to take a week off. You know what I mean? So I think that this pressure to be the same every day is really a problem. And I think it comes from a lack of education. And it's so important for us to understand that women are different every day. Mm -hmm. And this is why I teach about the moon, you know, because the moon is also a, you know, it's a 29 and a half day cycle, much like our, it's exactly like our menstrual cycle. And the faces of the moon directly line up with our hormones. And so we are, we literally have the moon in our body. That's why women call, call it our moon. And we can use that as 
permission to realize it's okay to be different every day. It's okay to be ever changing. You know, the masculine energy is like the sun and the sun goes through the whole Zodiac over the course of a year and the moon goes through the Zodiac over the course of a month. So if you look at the masculine energy, relatively linear and unwavering and the feminine energy of the moon, we're changing every two and a half days. (laughs) <laughs> you know? Yeah. So um, I just think knowing that and understanding that is so empowering. Mm-hmm. I love that. And, and it really is. And I, just like I said, it really does come back to self-love, seeking out the wisdom that we need, having a community, our tribe, our sisters, and then like just being loving and compassionate with ourselves, understanding Yes, we have these cycles and kind of like we keep a little calendar in my house. So it's like, okay, you know, even my husband, he likes to keep an eye on the calendar and just be like, mm. okay. And like not scheduling really important meetings at that time of the month where you know you're just going to want to be creative or you're just going to want to mm-hmm. have a bath or just go run the forest with the kids, you know, whatever it may be. And then exactly. here we are, you know, in another transition of a season. And that's another huge thing, whether it's spring or we're blossoming or, autumn or you know the winter solstice where we're to to be still and go inward so if we just you know just be a little kinder to ourselves and trust that we have this innate wisdom within us and and live from that place we have so much more freedom you know and I think that's where you're saying where we plague ourselves with guilt and we make ourselves feel like we're not enough and instead just be like oh oh my goodness you need a day's rest how beautiful let's Mm -hmm. let's celebrate that (laughs) celebrate it exactly exactly Mm -hmm. So um, thank you so much. This is just a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And so you were saying, you know, I I love that you said, you know, to find out who we are, we have our spiritual practice. And then from that place of finding out and knowing our true essence, then it's like showing up and being that, whether it's in the meeting or as you said, at the Thanksgiving dinner or wherever in your life, um, Speak to that a little bit more. I'd love to hear more about that. Yeah. So I, this was, this has been my experience. So I lived in San Francisco for six years and I was for sure, you know, playing the internet, like the famous internet person, you know, my live more way less program was doing very well. I I had a lot of success And I started putting on a facade about who I was. I started putting on a persona and playing the role. And I then developed this like split personality and I became really fearful that I was going to be found out. Um, And it was so, it was like sort of unconscious and below the surface, but really draining. And what ended up happening was behind the scenes, I was doing a priestess training in the 13 Moon Mystery School. And I wasn't telling anybody. It was like my big secret because I was so worried that if I came out and I said, actually guys, this emotional eating isn't the whole picture. I really want to talk to you about spirituality. I was worried that I would stop making money. I was worried that I was going to, that my whole audience was going to ostracize me. I was having um, this experience of, you know, collective consciousness around, you know, being part of a witch hunt and also just like being the collective consciousness of the patriarchy. So many of us have had different experiences depending on our lineages around um, not, you know, not being accepted, you know, racism, all this stuff. So I think that what was, but what was happening was I needed to choose. I needed to stand for who I was. I needed to choose. And I ended up writing out this very long, probably 15 page vision of what I wanted to create in New England. So I'm from, I'm from New England. I was living in San Francisco. I wanted to move back with my husband I had two kids at the time and I had this knowing that I was meant to gather women in person and hold space for the divine feminine and usher women in New England into this work who haven't experienced it yet. And um, I was like, great, so I'll just get a starter house 
And then in five years, I will look to sort of start this retreat center type situation. So two weeks later, I'm on um, a website looking at houses with my husband. And all of a sudden, this house comes up that has, I kid you not, every single little thing I put on my vision. Mm, I love it. Like the long winding driveway with trees, the acres of forest where women could gather in the forest, big mm. open fields where we could circle. I had on my vision that I wanted to build a yurt. This property already had a huge round building separate from the house. That oh was my goodness. Seasons. Um, and then a lake. You know, I mean, it was just wild. When, when I looked at the listing, I started to cry. And my husband just was so nervous. He was like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening right now. You know, and because um, he knew, he knew that this was yeah. some serious magic. So yeah. I, the next morning, I was so panicked about it. I Googled the name of the property that they listed. And turns out it's owned by my high school therapist in a completely wow. different town from where I grew up. And I used to come here for therapy, but I didn't make the connection. Oh my gosh. Wow. So crazy. So anyways, I send her an email. I come to visit the house. It's way over our budget. Um, and I, when I'm here, I instantly knew that this was for us, but I am still kind of in hiding about being a spiritual space holder. Um, and I, I sort of felt like I was given, I was like given the option from, from the divine and just saying, okay, Sarah, if you're willing to come out of the broom closet and say who you are, this is what I want you to do. Mm. This is, this is here for you. You asked for this. So are you going to really follow through? And it was in that moment that I like basically every other day I was like, yes, this is amazing. This is my purpose. And then I would go into the place of this is too much money. This is just a coincidence. This isn't real. Mm -hmm. And so in that six month period where I was constantly waffling and going through the most insane identity crisis at the same time, my, my nanny quit. And so now I'm running a business and I'm a stay at home mom. My husband is in his surgical residency, making no money and working 90 hours a week. Mm. And we're in San Francisco where the cost of living is astronomical, wanting to buy this huge house, which is way over our budget. So I said, okay, if there's any time for me to really dial in my spiritual practice, this is it. And so I would sit at my altar for close to an hour every morning and I would just, I'd meditate, I would pray, I would pull cards, and I just had to keep coming back to to do here. Because anytime I wasn't in that space, I would forget who I was, you know? And it was so important. But what the other part of that, which was so key, was as I started to do that for myself, my, my community, started to really help me also remember who I am. So I felt like the universe was sending me angels to like constantly remind me, like, this is real. This is good. This is big magic, Sarah. You have to go for it. We believe in you. Um, when there were other people in my life who were really concerned with my safety, right? And my safety, Sarah, don't spend this much money on a house. Don't you want to have another baby? Isn't it going to be so, like, so hard to take care of 23 acres? All very legitimate concerns to have, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Especially because I had just spent six years being super stressed out and the people who loved me the most wanted me to have an easier life. And, um, and so, and I honored that and I had to also lean on my, my magic tribe to remind me who I was and what I was capable of and how I was capable of expanding. So we ended up buying the house. We've been here for about a year and a half now. Mm, I wonder. And it's been, and of course, like as soon as I showed up in Massachusetts, I wanted to like put my polo shirt on again, you know, nothing wrong with polo shirts. It's just when I wear something like that, I'm in disguise, right? <laughs> yeah. So me being me, I needed to wear my indigo jumpsuit and my feather earrings to the grocery store. You know, I needed to not hide anymore. Mm -hmm. But I just noticed this, this desire to not be real about who I am. 
And so again, I had to come back to my spiritual practice and remind myself who I am so I could actually show up at the grocery store, like wearing things that actually express who I am on the inside. And, well, and if, uh, let me ask you just a little question. Yeah. That, so um, I, I am just like hanging on your every word, um, but I just, what helps you know, and I, I, I hear, you know, deep spiritual practice every day, but did it, did you ever think that, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery store in this, my feather earrings, because I'm trying to like prove something. And, and is this my authentic self or is my authentic self in the polo shirt um, that is really wanting to come back out here? So how are you differentiating and being sure that the, the feathers and everything was more the authentic self? Right. I think it came, it really is about the voices. So I think we have all, we all have different voices in our head and I've learned to differentiate the voice. So the voice in my head that is maybe telling me to tone it down, she'll say, Sarah, come on, can't you just tone it down a little bit? This is just a little much, you know, she's a little bit judgmental. She's just trying to keep me safe. But I can tell with the words that she uses and the tone that she makes that she just wants me to blend in. And then I have another voice that says, Sarah, you do you. Go for it. And that those two voices are just so different when we, when we learn to listen to them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. One is like kind and like, you honor yourself. And the other one's like... Uh, come on now, you know, it's like that inner mean, mean girl in a way or. Right. And you know. she's like, she's always sort of like rolling her eyes at me. Like, Ugh, Sarah, really? <laughs> you know? So, so is there a way though that you can, cause we, you know, all have these dualities within us, but is there a way that that can integrate more and she can just celebrate like that we can celebrate all aspects of self and even that part that is trying to help us play safe or not, you know, the ego or whatever we want to call it. Um, is there a way that we can find that inner peace between those voices inside us? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the, the inner peace comes from not getting angry when those voices come up and to ask that voice, you know, if you're sitting in meditation, you know, to follow it through and to, and to respond in a loving way. Oh, honey, I, I hear that you're maybe a little bit nervous around me being myself here. Uh, why? Can you tell me why? Um, and then maybe I'll usually do this in journaling and she'll say, I just really don't want anyone to make fun of you. And then I'll say, oh yeah, I get that. You know, when did, like, what are you thinking about when people made fun of you? And then I always go, you know, to this, all the times on the playground when I was a little girl where people made fun of me for being overweight. And I just said, yeah, I get that. That was really hard. And I'm, I'm not seven anymore. And I have a really great community and I'm super safe. And um, if someone does make fun of me, I can handle it because I'm an adult now. Mm. I'm not seven. So beautiful. Yeah. That's so and gorgeous. That really, that really helps. And then she can sort of relax and be like, okay. And then I'll ask her, what do you need? What do you need to feel safe? Mm. And, and she'll say, I guess I just really need to know that you're an adult now. Mm -hmm. And cause so many, so often we're operating from our seven year old selves Mm -hmm. and we have to be the adult. Um, and I find that when I follow that voice, it's really, it's super healing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for sharing. It's like to the depths of your soul and um, it just inspires so many to allow themselves to explore and to heal and to rise up. Um, and I love hearing about your new home. Uh, well, not, you know, 18 months into it. Yeah. And clearly it's a very healing space because if you went there as a child for, um, I think you said for therapy, obviously yes. it, it, this land, uh, of course, because I just live so deeply with the land. It, it will, it, you know, it holds these, these energy lines that will invite people in for healing. So um, it just sounds like you've been gifted from the goddess from spirit. It's like, okay, here, now you can play full out here. Exactly. Exactly. That's what it feels like. Mm. 
so beautiful, so beautiful. Um, well, I would love to ask you, what are um, maybe your top three um, kind of that help you really stay in balance, keep your, your energy high, you know, keep you in your joy? What are three top things that you would share with us that you do regularly? Mm-hmm. So a big thing that I check in on, and this is, this is one of the core pieces of Whole Woman, which is the Moonly membership that I run. And it's that we know that the earth needs all four elements to survive. So earth, air, fire from the sun, and water. Um, We also know from ancient wisdom that these four elements have like energetic archetypal counterparts. So earth being body, air being like our warrior work in the world, fire being our, our wild woman soul spiritual practice, and water being emotions, our relationships. So what often happens um, with me, and I've also seen this with a lot of women, is that we feel like we can, if we're going to do one thing really well, then the other things are not going to like really happen. So I had this belief system that when, when I became a mom, okay, now that I'm a mom, I'm no longer a sensual wild woman. And I really won't be able to kill it at work. And I certainly don't have time to take care of my body, right? Mm -hmm. And so what happened was because I was only focusing on one area, um, obviously the other three areas suffered, but motherhood, my relationships, that suffered too, because I wasn't a whole person coming to motherhood. And I think it is so important for us. And like, this happens with anything else. Like, okay, if I'm focusing on my body, I can't do anything else. My, like life stops until I lose 20 pounds or I'm really focusing on work right now and it's all, I'm all in and I don't have time to take care of myself and I don't have time for my kids and I don't have time for my spiritual practice. This, is, this happened to me like last week with the work example. And so what can happen is we just want to swing the pendulum and say, well, I guess I have to quit my job. It's just too much, <laughs> you know, closing down the business. And what I've learned to do is like, okay, if I'm feeling that way, about one area, I, I, instead of continually trying to fix work or fix motherhood, if that's where we're putting all our eggs, we have to turn and look at the other three areas, right? Mm. How am I authentically taking care of my body the way I want to? Am I receiving love and giving love in a way that feels true for me? And, um, am I tending to my spiritual fire? You know, am I tending to my, my sensuality, my wildness? And, um, Usually the answer is no. And then we can find ways to boost up those areas. And then lo and behold, work gets easier Mm. or we have more clarity because we're tuning into all the elements. We become a whole person. This is how we create life. Mm -hmm. We see it on the planet and yet we ignore it in ourselves, Mm -hmm. but we're just many earths walking around. You know, I think it's so cool. This is my favorite earth fact that we have the same amount of water in our body that the earth has on her surface. I love that. Yeah. Same percentage. So wild. So, um, that's my, that's my main practice comes from that to constantly tuning into, you know, what do I need for my body for energy? What do I need for my relationships for energy? What do I need for my spiritual practice? And it's always changing because we're always changing. Absolutely. And you thank know? you so much because what you're saying is, yeah, you're, you're allowed to have balance and yeah, it's okay if the skills go a little bit but it's like, okay, just remember to bring it back and, and mm-hmm. just have that, that mindfulness of, okay, have I looked after my physical, you know, emotional, spiritual body? You know, have I been intimate with my partner? Like, have I really, really connected with my children? Because as much as they need, they need us, we need them, you know? Exactly. And then, exactly. And then in our purpose and our Dharma, it's like, have I, have I, you know, been fulfilling that and and I love that because we do tend to go to that extreme okay I'm just gonna have to close down the business or this is just gonna and 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 there's this belief that there has to be suffering in one area you know and and sometimes there's a little bit of an imbalance but you know it's like a daily thing okay you know have I have I have I filled my well up first before I start giving you know like all of that so I love that um what are a, a couple of just quick little tips that you would suggest for 
people to enhance a prosperity and abundance Ooh. in themselves and lives. That's <laughs> a good question. So, I mean, the number, number one tip is, it's so cliche, but it's true, is, is be yourself. Because um, I find that when we connect with who we are and we are that person in daily life, the universe wants to help us help us be that person more and more. So for me, um, I know that I love being able to do my purpose work in the world all the time. And so that means that I need to get paid for it. Um, that's just my situation. It's not everyone's situation, but in order for me to spend, you know, an extra eight hours a day doing my thing, I got to get paid for it. So if I am saying to the universe, okay, I'm really going to show up and I'm going to be me and I'm going to do this work that I feel is true in my soul right now. Um, this is what I need to be taken care of. This is what I need to do your work. So I really feel like I'm always sort of like cutting a deal with the goddess, which I know sounds a little bit strange, but I find that it really works when I really sink into, okay, what do I need to be fully freed up to be who I am and to do the work that I feel what, that my soul is here to do? And I'll make a list of my requirements um, to be a, you know, a solid warrior. And I have to say that I am, I'm usually provided for. Mm. even if it comes in different, in different ways. I love that. And it really comes down to being willing to ask being, yes. and, and, and cause you, you know, in this work, as, as I know as well, it's, it's about giving, but it's giving from this place of pure ecstasy and bliss because it's just, oh, just you, that's what you, in your soul, you know, you're meant to do. And at the same time that giving and receiving that yin yang, you know, that's just vital. So I love that. And then what are a couple of quick tips for, for vibrant health? So for vibrant health, what I really recommend is not eating things that we're allergic to, you know? So I realized that I am allergic to dairy. And when I stopped eating dairy, I became a completely different person. And I just think it's so important for us to understand if, there, if we're eating something that our body sees as poison, we have to cut it out. Because when I stopped eating dairy, oh my gosh, I just had so much more energy. I was happier. I wasn't sneezing all day. I would literally sneeze all day. Mm. And I just thought I had seasonal allergies all year round. And mm. it was not true. Um, and I felt down. I felt depressed. And really cutting that out has made a huge difference in my life. Yeah. And I can totally relate for me. It's sugar, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's like, and even if I have a tiny bit of something I didn't know was in there, it's like, Oh, I'm sneezing. And it's Oh, thank you, body. Our bodies are amazing. Amazing. Um, okay. So last question, I, even though I would love to just sit here with you for hours, um, I know, me too. <laughs> how can we be of service to you? Oh, so sweet. Well, I just love, I have so much joy connecting with women. And so I think the two things that I would love for all of you to do is to follow me on Instagram, Sarah Jenks, and that's a great place for us to connect. And the other thing that I would love to offer to your community, Amanda, is um, sort of a back door into Whole Woman because we're not open right now for enrollment, but I have a feeling like your community would just really jam with the with what we're doing there because we give Muli videos and it's a community of really cool women who are all standing up and saying I am committed to being who I am and creating a life that I want to live and we're committed to each other having that freedom and so I would love to offer you the back door in and so you guys can go to wholewoman.me backslash secret and um you will get the sort of a secret passage <laughs> into mm -hmm. the program. Thank you. And, thank you. Um, and we we'll definitely love to have you guys. Yeah, I will definitely put those links in the show notes. So thank Great. you so much. Yeah. Oh my goodness, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing this incredible wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. I'll talk to you soon. Now I would love to hear from you. In what ways do you feel that you've been hiding out? not honoring your true self. 
Are you willing to listen to that kind, authentic voice inside of you and step out in the world as you truly are? We'd love to hear your story. As always, your story can help inspire others. Thanks, beloveds, for joining us today. Please come over to themandacons.com to continue the conversation and get access to all my podcasts, blogs, and videos. Did you enjoy this podcast? If so, please subscribe to the Amanda Collins podcast on iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Feel free to pass this podcast on to your friends. That helps us get incredible guests to share their secrets for an inspired and joyful life. If you want more great resources, come over to amandacollins.com and join my mailing list for all my latest content. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, I'm sending love and joy your way.